Welcome everyone to the Learn.UQ Basics workshop for tutors. In these sessions, I will briefly introduce uh, what is Learn.UQ, and then we will look through the welcome page, uh, Learn.UQ course assessment and grade center in um, the Learn.UQ course. So first, what is Learn.UQ? It is Blackboard, which is the learning management system um, used at UQ. Uh, it is flexible and open, centering on student achievement. So in a Blackboard course or a Learn.UQ course, course coordinators and tutors can upload resources, create activities, integrate different e-learning tools, uh, which we call centrally supported tools, and uh, publish assessment, manage the grade center as well. Uh, so now I'm going to get you uh, into your Learn.UQ course, the training course that I have created for you. Uh, so if you can go to learn.uq.edu.au. After that, um, if you haven't logged in, you will need to use your UQ username and password to log in. And then you will click on the learn.uq basics for tutors training course with the number attached to that. Um, so if you can uh, go to a screen similar like what I am having, uh, then we can start from there. Yeah, and I thank Achini and uh, Ji Chen. Yeah, I'm reading your introduction in the chat. Yeah, that's great. And feel free to ask any question if you uh, get lost or have other questions that you need to clarify. And uh, please let me know if you are in the learn.uq uh, or a similar page that I have here. Yep. Uh, can I check that everyone, are you uh, in Blackboard? You can use, um... yep, thanks Rose. All right, so uh, we are now in Blackboard and as you can see that the first page that you land at is in the courses. So it shows all the courses that you are enrolled in, whether as a student or as a tutor uh, or teaching assistant. And usually you often see a message coming up here. Uh, this is the technology called IMPACT and only us, the learning advisors and the library have access to the IMPACT message. And our purpose is to send any notification uh, that course coordinator or tutor or student need to pay attention to. So if you have already read this and it doesn't relate to you, uh, then you can close the message by clicking on the close button. So the first view that you see is the courses and it, it has a very good filter function. If you click on the down arrow next to current courses, you can search for courses using the filter here. For example, the course that you teach in the previous semester um, or the current courses or the coming courses that you are going to teach, that is one filter view. Uh, please, uh, Okay, and also, with the, yes, yeah, the recording, I will be sending the recording after that. Uh, so now I'd like you to click on search for your courses here. Uh, can you type in uh, basic for tutors? Basics for tutor. So as a trainer, I have created a number of uh, training courses, but you have been assigned one course only. So hopefully you will be able to see one similar course available for you. If you can see that, you can click on the course and it will uh, open to the training course today. And other uh, features that I'd like to introduce is that there are two view of the courses. Uh, currently you are looking at the grid view. Can you see uh, this icon? This is the grid view. And if you click on the next one, this is the list view. If you find the list view is easier for you, you can click on the list view. And then for a particular course, you can favorite your course so that the course uh, appear as the first view for you. So if the basic for tutors for today, uh, can you please favorite that?
So I will go back to my grid view. And I know that my course is number 15 today. So I go to number 15. And from the grid view, uh, if you can see the three dot on the top right corner of that course, if you click on that, you can edit the course image, open the course, or uh, close the course, course, and hide the course. Hide the course here means that you want to hide from your own view. It doesn't mean that the course will disappear from the learning uh, management system. As you can see that all the courses here have the same image. If you want to edit the course image for uh, your course, then you can click on edit the course image and change the image or the photo here. So that is some of the function uh, functionality that you can uh, use in uh, terms of the course view. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce a few other tab on the menu. So on the menu, you can see that at the top of the menu, we have the institution page. Oh, okay, yeah, Sarah, um, your course is number four only because as a trainer, I have I own all the courses here. And then I assign each of you one course for the training today. So uh, that's good. Yeah, Sarah, you have only one course. Old course in my group view. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. You. You cannot. Ah. Uh, okay. Um. If you want to get rid of the old course, uh, that means that uh somebody had to take you out of the course because you are enrolled in the course. So it is uh, listed all here. So for example, for myself, I have hundred of courses listed here. Uh, but if you want to take you out of the course, the course coordinator or us can uh, take you out of the course, but you cannot take you out of the course. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Rosling, uh, what do you mean by you can't edit? What do you mean by can't edit? I did the cost image came up good and yeah so this is the ah uh, okay yes yeah if you have uh, if you are enrolled in a course as uh, a teaching staff in the course you can edit the image uh, so for example you click onto uh, the training course today you can try that with the training course uh, you can do anything with the training course today because it is only a training one uh, and uh, you can upload a new image for your course and the image must be um, with this dimension. So uh, if you can have an image and then edit the image to have that dimension, then you can upload the image and then the image will be displayed. Right. So now let me introduce you about the institution page. So in the menu on the top one is the institution page. And institution page, it has University of Queensland banner. And underneath that, uh, there's spotlight. So any important information that the university want to bring uh, to your attention, it will be listed underneath the spotlight. And underneath that, there's useful links. For example, I can see that uh, a lot of you here are the PhD student. Uh, so if you uh, want to know more about the academic integrity module or the Authenticate, Authenticate is the tool that check the similarity report. And in the future, it will be able to check uh, the generative AI indicators. Uh, then you can access Authenticate and submit your draft a paper or chapter to check the similarity report here. Uh, it, and it has linked to others, um, useful website or uh, tool available at UQ. Uh, for example, my media is uh, about the Cultura. Cultura is like the YouTube video channel for UQ. 
So if the, your course use uh, video assignment, for example, then the student uh, should be able to upload their video to media and then upload to your Blackboard. So we have a tool called uh, video assignment. If you need to have uh, more training on that, please uh, book a consultation with us. Uh, David, uh, edit your name. So what do you mean by edit your name? Edit your name in the course or edit your name in here? In the system. Uh, okay, so that one, uh, maybe you need to email to ITS because ITS have your name and uh, which link to the email address and link to UQ username. Uh, so the name, we do not take care of the name. Individual consultation, that's good. good. Uh, question, uh, we have the uh, link um, to what the end of our... Um, session I'm going to send to you, but here, uh, as I am here, I quickly send you the link here so that you can save the link. Yep, so if you need, yeah, no worries, yeah. And uh, let me continue here. Underneath the useful link, you can see the course signs, signs request form. So this link is needed uh, more for the course coordinator. Uh, for example, this year uh, they are teaching a course and next year they will repeat the same course. So what they can do is that they can click on the sign request form to request the course copied over from one year to the new year. So in the future, if you become course coordinator, uh, this is the site where you can request to copy the course from the previous year to the year that you are teaching. Yeah, so that, that is that about the institution page. Underneath that, you can see your own name. Excuse me. So in your own name uh, page here, uh, this is like your profile in the um, in Blackboard. And it shows my full name here. So if you want to change your name in Blackboard, like this one, David, uh, you need to contact ITS. So the email is ITS. If you can type in your email ITS, then it come, uh, comes up with a full email address. And then you can request to change your full name here. And one thing is the global notification setting. So um, if you have received a lot of email notification and you do not want to receive them, then you can come here and click on the pencil or the pen icon to change the notification. Yeah. Uh, so then you can see all of the boxes which you can uh, tick or untick to reduce or increase the notification email. And for other information, you cannot change it here uh, because uh, we do not have access to change uh, our details on Blackboard. The activity stream here is very useful for the student. Uh, so when the course coordinator or a teaching staff in a course create an activity or an assignment, it will be shown in the activity stream and also send a notification email to the student. We have already talked about courses, how we view the course, how we favorite a course, hide the course, change the photo, and so on. Organizations here means organization course. Uh, organization course is created for a course with a very large number of students, and the students uh, mainly need an, uh, a blackboard signed uh, for information rather than for learning. So organization course doesn't have an ECB. Yeah, thank you, Rose. No worries. Uh, the calendar here is on the due date. Uh, the date of the calendar is linked to the grade center. Uh, so it will be uh, listed here uh, for the student uh, and for the staff. If you have uh, all the deadline and everything, it will be listed in the calendar. 
messages is a function uh, so that you can send message uh, to a member of the courses here. Uh, however, we have email and other tools to communicate with the students. So um, usually we do not send the message through Blackboard. Yeah, Mark, I do not have permission to assess this content, but Mark here means that if you have any deadline to mark any assignment, then it will be listed here for you. And uh, that is about uh, the, um, the landing page uh, of uh, Blackboard. So now let's go inside uh, the training course today, which is our main part. So if you can click on the training course, uh, my course is number 15. So I'm going to click on that. Please let me know if you do not have a Learn.EQ basics for tutors. Yeah, it seems that everybody is uh, in their own course. Uh, so before we go into our own training, I'm going to show you the first part, which is called the learning pathway. Yes, yeah, that is the same, Sarah. Uh, please click on course number four. So everyone has the same course. Uh, and uh, I picked number 15 for myself, but for you, Sarah, it's number four. Uh, before we do other activities within the course, I show you this one. So this one is um, a real course. Uh, it is an engineering course and uh, it allows us um, to use the course as a sample. So this course has a tool enable, which is called a learning pathway. So learning pathway, uh, it can be the landing page for a course where the student can have the view of the assessment. So you can see that. So here, when the student access to their own course, they will be um, provided with the learning pathway. So in the learning pathway, student will have overview of all the assessment in the course here. And then all the announcement. And uh, importantly, they have the view of what will be happening for each of the week. So they will know that uh, what they need to do for the week and the link for all the activities here. So this is the tool called uh, Learning Pathway. And students can use the arrow here to jump between week and week so that they can have an overview of what they are required to do every week. So in the training today, we do not enable the Learning Pathway. Uh, and okay, so the course that you are in now is called the Learn.UQ Basics. So Haida, are you in that course? The one that have the learning I'm just looking here. for it now, sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, so the learning pathway that I'm showing here is only a demo from a real course. Uh, I'm not sure whether your course is using learning pathway or not. Uh, this is a tool that is available at UQ, uh, but all of the tools here uh, available, it does not mean that your course have to use the tool. Uh, so I just want to introduce that. There's a learning pathway um, that is available for every course. So coming back to our training here, uh, if you do not have a learning pathway, when students click on a course, the first thing that is displayed for them is the announcement. So I'm just uh, checking uh, which course Haida is in. So, um, yeah, oh, Haida, I think I can get you into a course quickly. Yes, yeah, Haida, you are in course 10. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
No worries. So the announcement um, is the, the area where the course coordinator and the teaching staff can post any important message for the student. For example, at the beginning of the course like this week, uh, a welcome message has been sent to the students so that uh, they know uh, this is their course and what they are expected to do during the year and the semester and uh, what they need to do in the first week, for example. So uh, let's practice creating an announcement. So uh, I'd like you to click on create announcement here. And um, we can add a subject to the announcement and then uh, the main content in the text box. So my message is very simple. Welcome to eLearning 2023. Hi everyone, I hope you have a good start to the semester and I'm looking forward to meeting you in our first tutorial. So that is the subject and the message. And underneath that, you can see there is an email announcement. Uh, we recommended you click that box, send a copy of this announcement immediately. That means that uh, a copy of this announcement will be both added to Blackboard and also sent to student email and your email as well. So once you finish that, click on Submit. And as you can see that, um, the welcome message is added um, on, the, on the top position. So every week when you send uh, an announcement for the student, uh, it will be arranged on the top of the page. And if you need to do any addition for that, you can edit. Usually in Blackboard, uh, whenever you want to edit something, find the down arrow, the down arrow uh, and click on that. Then you can edit or delete. Um, One more thing I'd like to introduce about the announcement is that um, you can see that new announcement appear below this line. You can see that uh, if you can drag your announcement up there, that means you can pin that announcement. Uh, for example, uh, some courses have uh, the welcome to country or the acknowledgement of country, and they want to uh, keep that uh, pin on the top of the announcement all the time. So you can uh, drag that one on top of um, the new announcement appear below this line. So that message will stay on top and every other messages, uh, every other announcement will be added underneath uh, this line. So are we all good about the announcement? Yes, uh, there is a reaction. Um, yeah, in the toolbar, in the Zoom toolbar, if you can show me your thumbs up that you are good with the announcement, then I can move on to the next part. Any question? Yeah, let's move on to the, uh, the course staff. 
So can you see the cost staff here? If you click on the cost staff, you can see that uh, in that folder, all of the staff have been added here. So um, one of my colleagues uh, have used the uh, Chris Hemsworth and Marco Robbie uh, added to uh, the course as an example. So as one of the teaching staff, uh, you should be able to edit the information in the course staff area and then add your name and other details. So I'd like to, um, to encourage you to click on the first example here and then edit your information. And if you do not have a photo, uh, we have sent a zip file in the invitation today so that you can have some information to add in. So simply find the down arrow and edit that. The sample photo that I have used for myself here is not, um, uh, it's not very nice because I didn't choose the um, correct uh, recommended dimension. Um, it says that if you can have 100 plus 100, um, then it will display a bit, uh, better like the sample that my colleagues have added here. So that is about the cost stuff. Are we all good about uh, this part? Let's move on to the learning resources. Yeah, there's some uh, cool features here that I'd like to show you. Uh, when you click on the learning resources, uh, there's always a support message here. This item is hidden from student, uh, but it is available in your view. So if you know about all the information here, you can either delete that support area or you can arrange so that the support area going uh, to the bottom of the, the folder. So I show you these features. Uh, this is an up and down arrow here on the top right of your screen. It's very small, it's an up and down arrow. If you can click on that, you can then change the position of support, for example. Click on support and then use the down arrow here to move it to the bottom of the folder. And then select submit. And then you have to click OK to confirm the action. Is that, uh, is that clear for you? The up and down arrow on the top uh, right of the screen. And also uh, you can see the support button is around here. Uh, you can drag it up or down by using the up and down arrow here and drag it up and down the screen. Usually it is often hidden um, the area where we need 
Yeah, uh, so uh, this is the up and down arrow here to rearrange the order of the item within a folder. Yeah, can you see that? The up and down arrow here. It might be hidden uh, because we are working on a Zoom and maybe um, the Zoom photo have covered that. Can you see that now, Sarah? Yeah, that's good, no worries. Click on that and then you can change the order um, up and down here. Uh, the reason why I show you this, sometimes uh, it is difficult to drag the item up and down. If you have a very long list, then uh, you can use that up and down arrow. Other, other than that, you can uh, drag the items up and down within a folder, but sometimes it's just a bit difficult to drag. So let's continue. The learning resources. Uh, when you click on the learning resources in your own course, you will be able to see the transcript advice. The training course doesn't have the advice here because the training course is a bit outdated compared with the policy. We have the new policy about the transcript. So keep this one at the top of the screen. Do not change that. That is the first uh, note. I like to highlight. The second one is the lecture recording. So uh, it is important that you keep on the lecture recording within Echo 360. So um, what you can see here is the um, is the link lecture recording and the technology behind that is Echo 360. So let me demo this one. If I click onto that, uh, it will bring me to the Echo 360 platform. And what I need to do for this course is that I need to link uh, this course to the Echo 360 area of the course. Uh, but you do not have to do this. Your course coordinator might have already done that. Or if you teach in a... Uh, um, uh, in the lecture theater room, it will be automatically recorded yeah, so uh, for example, if I go to the lecture recording in this course has been linked, so I show you how it look like. So for example, uh, the other sample course that I have here, it linked to this course and then all the recording will be available here. So what I mean is that the student have one point to access the lecture recordings. In the past, some of the course, actually a lot of courses um, use the method to copy the recording link and then paste that onto Blackboard or send email to the student, uh, which is not a recommended practice because if we continue to post the recording on Blackboard, it will consume a lot of memory. Uh, from Blackboard and UQ have been paying more and more money on top of that. So uh, we need to keep all the lecture recording within um, this folder here. And another reason is that we want the student to have one stop shop to assess the lecture recording. And also the uh, new policy is that if we keep the lecture recording in Zoom link after 365 days, the file will be auto deleted. So that's the reason why we need to keep all the lecture recordings within uh, uh, this tool. Related to lecture recording, we have uh, the Zoom link for the student. So if you do not teach over Zoom, for example, Kelly, you do not have to worry about the Zoom link. But if you have a Zoom link, um, the Zoom link should be uh, somewhere here in the learning resources. And in the first week, the students should be introduced about where they can access the Zoom link. For example, this one, uh, you can see that I always edit the link here. And then I add instruction for the student in the text area. For example, my instruction is, please click on the Zoom link to join the weekly lectures and tutorial. And I also place the Zoom link here. So that when the student look at the link here, they know what they should do with the link. 
So now I'd like you to edit the lecture recordings and type in the text box. Please click on the link above to access the course lecture recordings. So we, we practice to have um, always include an instruction for the student. Yeah, I will give you uh, one or two minutes to add that instruction. So at the bottom of your screen, I think there's um, a reaction function where you can uh, use a thumbs up or thumbs down um, so that I, I know how you are doing in the training course. Yep, thanks, Haida. So the rule of thumbs here is that whenever you create a new link uh, for the student, please add an instruction for them. Now let's move on to the course reading list. UQ have had a new technology for the course reading list, which is called Talis reading list. So uh, I will grab this link and send you in the chat. So this is a task done by the course coordinator. Uh, so this link that you have in the chat is an instruction by uh, library uh, to introduce how to use the course reading list. So when the in uh, the course coordinator or a uh, teaching staff uh, who are responsible to create the course reading list, uh, you can click on the reading list and then you can check on the weekly uh, reading uh, that have been assigned for each of the week. And again, you can always click on the down arrow here and add the instruction for the student. Please click on the link above to access the course reading list. The course reading list can also be listed in each of the week. However, the difference is, is that if it is outside here, it should cover the reading list for the whole course. But if you add the link within the folder, it should be only the weekly list, not the semester list. So the link that I have shown you provide you the instruction of how to add the reading list for the whole semester and for weekly reading. So ideally, the uh, resources should have this uh, information on top. And I understand that some big courses, you might have other information added in the uh, learning resources, for example, tutorial. So you have a table added here and you have um, uh, names of the tutors and the Zoom link and the room details and so on. Uh, but the important thing is that show the student, let them know where they can find the information. So underneath this uh, will be the weekly folder, where if you can click on the folder here, you can see different information can be sent to the student. Yeah. And uh, within each folder, you can create different content. And it is underneath the view content here. You can either create an item, send a file, uh, send an image, a web link, a course link. So these are the information that you can add it to a folder. So let's practice that. Uh, let's practice creating a folder and then different content within a folder. So let me go back to the learning resources so you can see that there's a shortcut on the top here where you can click on the learning resources and then we can create a new folder. So from here, uh, I'd like you all to click on view content and then going down to the right and select content folder. In view content and then content folder. And the name of the folder should be week three. Right. 
for example, if uh, in week three, you teach a topic related to your course, you can add the name of the week here. Uh, for example, uh, I am talking about the e-learning tools. And down here in the text is a very brief description of what you are going to teach in this week, or it can be what the student can find within this folder. And once you finish, you can submit. And uh, any in uh, new material that you created will be added at the bottom of the folder. So again, I like you to use the trick that we learned before: use the up and down arrow to arrange the new material to week number three. Submit and then OK. So now I have week three created underneath uh, week two. And now we can click on the link of the folder to get inside the folder. So uh, we're all good with creating the folder and get inside the folder. Yeah. So within the folder here, we can build the content inside that. Uh, as I said, um, you have the options to select items, file, image, web link, and so on. Uh, but in my opinion, um, I prefer to use item. Uh, if you use a single file and then a single image, a single web link, then it creates a lot of individual content, as I have shown you in week one. Uh, for example, here, it is actually not a good example where you have um, you know, tutorial question and then PowerPoint and then image and then web link, another web link, because it creates the, um, it doesn't have an overview of the whole week content. And also students have to scroll down a lot to find out uh, the information that they want. So this is only an example of what material you can create uh, within uh, a content area in Blackboard. So in terms of a better design, what you can create is the item. So uh, I can create an item here and in, within the item, you can add uh, different information. So for example, um, yeah, this is not an ideal one, but uh, for example, I am, um, this week's material. Um, so, materials or resources. Uh, if I need any instructions, I can have it here, or I can have a hyperlink. Uh, for example, the student have to check out the website. Um, then I can have an instructions. For example, uh, the student needs to understand about the. Uh, Talis, uh, Aspire. Yeah, so for example, one link that you need the student to read. Uh, so I simply grab the link uh, from the library that I have before. I can highlight that and then I click on the link I can paste that. And one important thing uh, to enhance the accessibility, select 
open a new window and then save. And also, I want the students to have access to uh, the PowerPoint, the WIC PowerPoint. What I can do is that I can click Browse Local Files. And then I um, click on my PowerPoint. And then I can submit. Yeah. Uh, so for the material that the student um, can access for the week here, um, you might uh, want to have more um, instruction for the student. Uh, for example, this is the uh, link that you need to read before the class. And uh, this is the PowerPoint. So when the students see this here with the color, it suggests the student to click uh, and then the material will be uploaded. Uh, downloaded to their uh, onto the device. Uh, and another uh, thing that you can uh, edit in. Um, the learning material, uh, the learning resource area is video. So if you have an, a video and you would like to share that to the student, uh, what you can do is that you can create uh, underneath view content, you can see that there's Cultura Media. So you can click onto that and then upload the video you want to share to the student onto Cultura and then Cultura will publish the video onto um, a content area here. So let me click onto that. So for this part, because I have already uploaded my video onto Kashira, so I have a number of them to choose from. If you do not have a video, you can click Add New and then select Media Upload. And then you choose a file to upload. So uh, because I do not have a file ready here to upload, uh, but for yourself, if you have a video to upload, you can try upload a file here. And once you upload the file to my media, your video will be available here on the list. And you can simply select to embed the video. So I give it a title and then I can add the instructions here. Uh, please watch the video uh, and So by embedding the video through that way, um, the video is displayed on the screen and the student can watch it from their Blackboard course. So that is about the learning resources. Uh, let me introduce you about the assessment. So if you can click on the assessment, uh, you will be able to see that uh, there's an assessment summary on top. And the easy way to create that is that you can uh, grab the ECP from 
um, a sample, not sample, but you can click on the CP, ECP of your course and then take a screenshot of the ECP. And then you can create an item and then edit the item as a photo. Uh, for example, I can quickly show a sample to you. Uh, the title is assessment item. And in order to add an image here, you click on the plus button, the plus button, and then you can insert a local file. And this is the course that I have um, grabbed the ECP. So I grab that ECP. And remember how to add that. Uh, you click on the plus button and then you do submission. And again, the submission will be uh, at the bottom of the screen where you can drag it up or use the up and down arrow. So it's very important if you can add the summary at the top of the submission of the assessment folder so the student have an overview of what they need to do. And in uh, underneath the summary, there are relevant or respective folders here. When the student click on each of the folder, they should have the relevance uh, information. So the first one is the quiz. So I'd like you to click on the down arrow of the quiz and make the test available. And after that, uh, can you click on the enter student preview mode? Whenever you want to check something, you can enter student preview mode. And then check the setting that you are keeping the preview user data. So click do not ask me and then select keep the preview user data. That means that uh, the data that you enter now as a student will be kept as a tested student. So now you are as a student, please click back on the assessment and click on the planning quiz. Student preview mode is still on. If you click on the quiz, you can start begin the quiz as a student. So uh, this question is all about a spot, uh, which I do not know about. So uh, I am going to uh, guess. So uh, after you finish the test, you can exit the preview. And it will bring back you to the announcement area as the instructor. After that, let's click back on the assessment and view other assessment. So the first one is the quiz. And the second one is an a research assignment. So this one is the standard uh, arrangement of a folder that uh, I was talking about. Uh, so as you can see that the research assignment material here are uh, created as an item. So as an item here. And then uh, the teaching staff have uploaded the file, for example, task brief, uh, critical film analysis, marking criteria, template, sample so they are all within one post and the student do not have to scroll down a lot uh, they have they can access by clicking on each of the link here and the material will be downloaded to there yeah yeah okay thanks Haida.
And the submission link here is a Turnitin submission link and make sure that you have all the instructions uh, and the guide here uh, for the student. Yeah. And uh, when you create a submission link, uh, for example, a Turnitin submission link or a quiz as the first one, and in the final exam here, you have an Inspira exam. So whenever you create a submission link like this one, then a column will be created in Grade Center. So if you can click on full Grade Center, you will be able to see that uh, the quiz is here. And my mark for the quiz is very low, yeah. An 0.4 out of six. And other students have achieved much higher grade. And the Planet Research Turnitin Submission column have already been created here. Um, so these are the overview of the grade center. And in order to have the final column, uh, grade center, the final grade, we have to create a calculated column here, uh, which is another tool that if you need a more personalized uh, instruction, please book an appointment with us. We can help you with that. So this is uh, basically what uh, we can do within the Blackboard. And the focus today is the learning resources where you can create and design the material added to a, a Blackboard course. And I'm checking the chat if you have other questions. Yeah, please yeah, feel free to ask any questions. And I hope that you have a bit of practice today uh, creating different content within the Blackboard course. Do you have any other question? Yeah, okay, yeah, so um, I will, yeah, thank you Kelly, thanks David and everyone. So uh, I will send you the recording uh, and also um, particularly the guide um, and uh, Hang on, uh, while you are still here, I just quickly show you, uh, this is our guide page. I'm going to quickly send you in the chat. And if you go to our e-learning page, you can see um, there are guides, there are workshops. And if you need any guide here, there's a filter here where you can search for a uh, different tool so that you can have kind of an overview of a tool and then please book a consultation with us. We are very happy to work with you one-on-one uh, -on -one to help you with your course. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so uh, have a good semester. Bye, everyone. <laughs>